Hello everyone and welcome to the session 9 of Purus Material 101. I'm Arash and in today's session we're gonna talk about connectivity analysis. Now let's start with a very simple example. Take this simple geometry which represents a pore. So outside this geometry we have solid space and inside we have the void space. Now if we segment this geometry into smaller elements we can say that here we have one pore and for example here we have another pore here another one large one at the center and probably one pore here okay and then if we connect these pores based on the structure we can say that this is almost the structure of this small pore network inside this solid space I know it's not very precise, but just assume that it's a good fit. So connectivity means that each of these pores is connected to how many of the other pores in the vicinity. So for example, the connectivity number or actually coordination number of this central pore would be equal to 4. And here we have 1, 1, this pore is 2, and here we have another 2 okay so this is the coordination number of this pore network this is a very important feature because it can tell us that how isolated are different different pores so if we have a pore out here it would take the coordination number of zero because it's not connected to any of the pores when we have one it means we have a dead end pore and it's not connected to any other pathway and when we have two uh, it means it probably looks like a channel which a series of pores are connected to each other like this okay and now let's talk about how we're going to detect this different pores from each other here just take this as another sample geometry of a pore space which is contains of two different pores so uh, if we wanted to segment this using the segment function that we have developed before it will give back us these two different geometries we would have zero outside of this geometry in all of the locations and then inside them for example for one of them we have ones a series of ones and here the voxel values of the segmented image would be for example two two different numbers which we call actually labels so uh, one point is that in MATLAB when we use watershed segmentation function it gives back us an array which have which has also zero at the ridge lines the lines that are separating different pores so we have zero also here these zeros it makes a bit difficult for us to detect which of these numbers are in the vicinity of each other or they're in touch with each other the solution to solve that is that we use a function named as image dilation so in dilation we just take a geometry and we morphologically add a layer outside of it so if we for example add this add the layer of the two values number two we add these two at the out outer boundary of this element and also we do the same thing for example for one at the outer part of this element so here as you can see at the center we have these ones and twos in vicinity of each other and then it would be much easier to detect that which of these numbers are connected to each other in order to be establish a connectivity analysis for this geometry so here this is a again another trick in order to find very fast which of the numbers are in touch with each other we can do this simple trick Mm, so we just simply need to shift uh, our array into uh, one of the directions in this space so if we do that for example take this array which is our dilated segmented map 
which we have ones and twos for two different pores which are in touch with each other so we wanted to find out and to get sure easily that one is connected to two so if we shift this array into the right side for one voxel then these two would be transferred here and this one as you can see would be transferred here now if we check the elements which are located at the same position and if they have two different values it means those values are in touch with each other because after we shifted these values for just one voxel they become at the same location as you can see so here two and one are located at the same location between the original and here the shifted array so it means that pore one and two are in touch with each other so it means for example if this is pore one and mm, this is pore one and this is pore two it means that they're connected they can see each other they can talk to each other if we wanted to have some fluid flowing through this structure so let's get back on the code i just did had to just uh, show you how does this thing gonna work so uh, i'm going to write all of the functions inside this main m file and then you will have access to it from the github link in the description now let's start by uh, closing all of the open figures and then creating a random geometry of overlapped spheres then we just need to remember that we need to assume an spatial uh, resolution for the image for some of the purposes such as pore size distribution and things like that and after that we need to segment the geometry into smaller elements as we have talked in the previous session after that as i have said because the specific condition of matlab which gives us gives us some extra zeros between two different pores we just use this um, inbuilt function of matlab known as imdilate which actually dilate the pores with these structuring elements which is actually in a small a very small cube when it dilates the um, the the segmented pore map it causes that these pores be in touch with each other and it would makes our life much more easier in order to detect the connectivities so in the next step as i have told to you we need to use that shifting trick in order to find out which of the pores are in touch with what other of the pores so we just shift our label geometry for one voxel in the x y and z directions as you can see in these three different lines and we put those shifted arrays inside c d and e arrays and then we just need to see what of these which one of these numbers are different but they're located at the same location of the array so if we do that I'm, I'm not going to go to details of this part of the code because it would be a bit confusing but you just need to know that the final output of this code if I run this part would be this array which I call it F and here if you open it you will have the unique labels of different pores which are in touch with each other so for example this line it means that pore 1 uh, sorry pore 2 is in touch with pore 34 and pore 3 is in touch with pore number 4 and 3 is also in touch with number 22 and we have a long list of different pores as you can see here um, and if we actually try to plot all of this connection we would also see our pore network so we have this f and then when we um, obtain this f which actually is the list of connections we are able to make a 
connectivity array which shows which of the um, pores are in touch with each other inside a very um, nicely designed array as you can see I'm calling it network I'm just looking through this list of connections and I'm putting all of those connections inside a very beautiful score array which um, shows us which of the pores are connected to what other pores so for example here this column you can see it's all zero it means that pore number two it's not connected to each of these pores as you can see but for example here this one it means that pore four and pore three they are connected to each other and as you can see here we are repeating the same value in the lower triangular of the array so pore 4 and 3 they're connected and here pore 5 and pore 4 is also connected this one it means they're connected and 0 means they're not connected mm, yeah this is this is the connectivity matrix of this geometry and then we can also calculate the coordination number so if uh, we just calculate the summation of this network array for example in the vertical direction it would gives us the coordination numbers so if if i open this array as you can see here so this means that pore 4 is connected to six other pores pore 5 is connected to two other pores and as you can see pore 1 is an isolated pore and it's not connected to any of the pores and also we can visualize this network function using an inbuilt command of MATLAB known as a spy if you run it you can see this is this is the connectivity matrix and it shows right here that which of the pores are connected so for example this dot here it means probably yeah the pore number 40, uh, 54 is connected to 150 and so on as you can see it's it's symmetric yeah so uh, in addition to that we are also able to plot the coordination number distribution and it gives us a good understanding that how well connected is this network so right now I'm running all of the code together so this is the connectivity matrix and this is the distribution of the coordination number as you can see most of the pores they have two connections some of them have three connections and so on as you can see it's very rare but one of the pores it's got 10 connections okay guys this was this session i hope it's been useful for you thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next session thank you and bye